That's a little bit better. Just like that. How are we doing, folks? Welcome to the Candle Enthusiast live stream. I am your host, Shane Carlson. And for those of you who are subscribed to this channel, I have been gone. I have been gone for over three months. However, I do have a second channel where I go live every Sunday. The reason why I have been gone, absent from the Candle Enthusiast, is because I am preparing for not my second, but my third YouTube channel. Let's lower this music and we'll continue to talk. That's a bit intense. I want to welcome everybody for joining. Um, if you are new to this channel, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, this is a show, uh, usually it's on my live channel called Aromatically Speaking. It's my secondary channel and I go live every Sunday and we talk about candles, we talk about the candle industry, we talk about travel and tourism, we talk about nostalgia, we talk about things that make us feel warm and cozy, set the mood, set the stage for uh, a nice relaxing Sunday. But see, let me, let me, let me fill you into something before because we have, we have a really, really fun show. I have tons of stuff to do. We're going to be breaking candles, we're going to be setting things on fire, we're going to be melting candy, but let me explain something real quick. YouTube just changed their policy. Yeah, their policy. Uh, unless you have 1,000 subscribers, which I do here on the Candle Enthusiast, but my second channel, Aromatically Speaking, which is just all live content, it's where I do all my live streams, you need 1,000 subscribers to go live uh, via a mobile device, and that's how I usually go live, because although I do my lives here in what I call the studio, uh, I like to get out and about, go outside, bring the cell phone, and uh, go live. But I can't do that anymore. My channel is useless until we get 1,000 subscribers, so please let me just plug my second channel real quick before we get started. Aromatically speaking, aromatically speaking on YouTube, please do me a favor, please support modest, humble YouTube creators who put their heart and soul, passion into making content. Swing on over and please hit subscribe. And if you could do me a huge favor, maybe grab a few friends who might be interested. And not just candles. Like I said, we do travel. I, we do, we, I travel to different locations. And uh, with the third channel that uh, we'll be launching very soon, there will be even more of that. So I'm going to be plugging that throughout the show. Aromatically speaking, please, please do me a favor. If there's anything I could ever ask, please swing over to that channel and hit subscribe. First thing to do is we have to pull you guys up. Since we're going live, uh, you guys can... Uh, chat, uh, ask questions while uh, I show you everything that I have here on the table. Like I said, tons of stuff. If you're familiar with my other videos, uh, like my travel videos, and you're like, what's this guy doing about talking about candles? Um, well, uh, I, I, well, the channel's called The Candle Enthusiast, but I make different kind of content. And on my live Sundays, live Sunday shows, we mainly talk about candles and fragrances. Um, where is it? We gotta pull you guys up. Gotta pull you guys up. I and mean, I'm telling you, we're gonna jump right into this. Uh, if you look at the headline, it says, Destroying and Fixing a Yankee Candle. That's right. How many times have um, you accidentally dropped your Yankee Candle a little bit too hard on the table, cracked the glass? Or let's say you purchased a Yankee Candle on eBay and you received it in the mail and the glass was shattered. Sometimes it's just a crack, but a crack means that you can't burn it. It's very dangerous because the whole thing can split and pour wax all over the place. So I am going to show you how to, what I, what I would consider the best way to fix a Yankee Candle uh, if the glass gets broken. A lot of you know that I uh, was in a pretty tumultuous earthquake in California. Lost a lot of Yankee candles, and this is how I really um, 
figured out and with trial and error how to fix Yankee Candles. Who do we have in the house? Thank you for everyone joining in. Uh, I'm drinking water, but that's only because I have to get some coffee in the mug. So if you are watching live and you're not in, you're not chatting and you're not asking questions, please join in, ask some questions. I'm going to try to keep my eyes down here um, while I drink out of my uh, Sleeping Beauty Maleficent Castle Tower mug. We're celebrating the 60th anniversary of uh, Sleeping Beauty. So I felt like it was only appropriate. Oh yeah, oh yeah, let's get started. All right. So the other day, I was looking for some candles. Uh, and um, here's, here's one of my Yankee candle shelves here. Um, I have about, about 300 and, uh, 350 uh, or so uh, Yankee candles here um, on this shelf. somewhat of a look there. It's not the best look, but I think that's good enough for now. Um, and what I did was, remember this? The Cookie Swap Collection. Um, uh, I dropped this a little bit too hard on the shelf. And can you see what happened there? We got a nasty little split in the glass. Um, that was really upsetting. That was really upsetting, but it happens. It happens. So let me demonstrate to you how we're going to fix the candle. We're going to start with this. It's going to take a little bit of time, so we're going to come back and forth to this. The best thing to do, uh, and I was going to actually take a hammer and uh, actually smash this a puppy up, uh, but I'm not going to do that uh, because there would be glass everywhere, and the last thing I want to do is bleed it to death here live. But the, the, the safe way to do this, and kids, please don't do this. If you are a child, even if you're an adult, I don't know if I can trust you. Um, be very careful. Uh, but what I do is I wrap this in uh, tape, whether it be duct tape or shipping tape, wrap it, the whole thing, then wrap it in a cloth, wear gloves, and I smash the glass and uh, get all of the glass off of the wax. So you simp essentially have the big hunk of wax without the jaw, okay? Um, and, uh, and then with a little bit of work, you can get the label off. This is not the best job because you, what you need to do is get like goo gone, goo gone or nail polish remover. There's some adhesive left on the label, but you can easily get the label off. So let's say we smash this jar, and uh, I already have something prepared. Um, you just take one of your empty Yankee Candle jars. Uh, this right here is Merry Christmas. Uh, I go through these like crazy, one of my favorite Christmas uh, fragrances by Yankee Candle. Uh, you just get an empty jar, and then when you have that, that uh, chunk of wax, what you're gonna do is take a very sharp knife, wear gloves, use a chopping block, be safe. You can even use an electrical uh, turkey carver um, if uh, you, know, you don't feel like you have a sharp enough knife. But what you wanna do is just trim off the excess sides of the wax. Okay, so this was much bigger, right? What do you do with the excess wax? I'll show you. Where is it? So what you shave off, right here, you just break it up and crumble it up as in the smallest pieces as possible. And what we're gonna do here this is fun. I, this is like, this is like a science class. We have a pan here, a saucepan, and I'm gonna put all of that wax. We could actually go much finer 
with that wax. But for today's purposes, that will be fine. I'm gonna pop on a lid. Do, do, do. I have a pink hot plate. It's a hot pink hot plate. I'm gonna turn this puppy on. I'm gonna turn it on hot. Uh, but we don't, we don't want to get the wax too hot, right? We don't want to turn this into a tarp warmer because we don't want to exude the oils from those crumbles. We just want to melt the wax. So I'm going to put this onto our hot plate. We're going to melt down that wax. I'm going to put this down here. Always make sure you have your fire extinguisher with you and ready to go. Meanwhile, you could put a little bit of hot glue, like a hot glue gun, uh, on the bottom here and stick it to the bottom of the glass. But for today's purposes, that will be fine. So you see, I trimmed the wax so this way I could get it, fit it into the lip of the jar because otherwise I wouldn't get that big hunk of wax in there, right? And if you'd rather use a mason jar and not trim all this wax, you could certainly do that. So let that wax melt, and then we'll come back to this experiment in just a little bit. So, how are we all doing? Let me check in with you guys down here. We have Bren in the house. Hello, Bren. Bren, uh... Bren and I collaborated. She's a wonderful, wonderful, uh, very honest and charming uh, YouTuber. She talks about, uh, uh, of course, uh, the candle, the candle industry. Uh, from, from what I know, I got a lot of my knowledge of Bath & Body Works from Bren. Bren, thank you so much for joining in today. Everyone say hello to Bren. And Bren, we have to, we have to work on another project because that was a really fun collaboration that we had. Okay, so uh, let us talk about, let's just get into something uh, really fun. Um, something I've been wanting to do. Uh, I love blow torches. I love blow torches. I love creme brulee torches. I love fire. I love burning things. I think it's fun to watch on camera. I don't recommend you do some of the things that I do at home. I've burned peeps Easter peeps with blow torches to see what kind of aromatics we could extract. I've made uh, a creme brulee candy corn treat for Halloween. But since we have Easter coming around the corner, I wanted to try something today. Now this is not the jelly bean uh, Yankee Candle that we all might be familiar with. We have a jelly bean uh, Yankee Candle uh, for a long time and then it was replaced was it two years ago with a different look different style slightly different aromatic it was a little bit more tart than it was sweet but this is the old school Yankee Candle jelly not jelly beans but jelly bean Yankee Candle in the medium size jar uh, I really love this one I wish I had more than one so that I could actually burn it but this one is not, oh, the easiest to come by. I mean, it smells like jelly beans, but to me, this is Easter basket all of the way. Easter basket in that, there's jelly beans in that Easter basket, but there's Starburst, there's Skittles, there's tart, citric acid candies, uh, now and later candies. This has a perceived tartness and really juicy, really juicy, ripe, fruity, and sweet uh, 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 aromatic to it. I really like this one. It, it actually reminds me of a retired Yankee candle uh, called ra simply just raspberry. So uh, very nice. If, uh, uh, I highly recommend which year. This is a 2012. I pretty. Sure, I mean, this is probably not the best time of the year to look for this, but I would recommend trying to look for this one on eBay when Easter is over or during, you know, the off season. But why am I talking about jelly beans? Well, other than the fact that it's Easter, 
I wanted to bring out my jelly belly dispenser here. I have a Pyrex um, measuring glass, right? This thing can withstand high heat. My question is, if we actually melted jelly beans, would it smell like this jelly bean candle? Like if we put jelly beans inside of a wax tart melt thingy, I don't really use them that much. You know, would it smell just as good, or not, if, better, if not better, than uh, the candle itself? So let's take, oh boy, dropping jelly beans. Let's take some jelly bellies. Now we got all different flavors in here. Oh, 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 it's a jelly bean. That's a jelly bean disaster right there. Oh man, I'm gonna be picking up jelly. My dog is gonna be eating jelly beans forever. All right, put this down before I spill more. This is insane. This is why rehearsals for these kinds of things should be done. All right, so I got a little bit of uh, oil inside of here uh, in the, the, the glass here. I'm going to coat that oil on the jelly beans and there's only one thing left to do, folks. Do not try this at home. In fact, uh, I don't recommend using that. Uh, something that's better, and I really mean this, You could uh, every candle owner, every candle enthusiast, I'm serious, should have one of these creme brulee torches on hand. Uh, I'll show you a little later how you can use this with fixing candles, but I'm telling you this is an essential tool for fixing candles. Um, a lot of people think when candles tunnel, they're done, they're, you know, they're garbage, you have to throw them away. That's simply not true. There's always ways to fix candles. And for something like $25, having something like this, uh, key, one of the most important things. So, let's uh, heat up these jelly beans. This is silly, this is silly, I know it's silly. Always make sure you're wearing protective gear. I have my glove. We're just gonna heat up these jelly beans. Let's see what this smells like. Oh yeah, can you see that? And we're gonna keep this moving around because we're gonna caramelize the sugars. Ooh, can you hear that? It's sizzling. I don't wanna burn the sugar. I just wanna caramelize it. So I don't wanna hit it with too much heat. Let's see if I can get in a little bit closer so you can see what's happening here. Oh yeah. Let's get a little bit more fire going, guys. Oh no. We're going overboard, I know. This is how I spend my Sundays. What do you do on your Sundays? Look at that. Is this, is this safe? This is safe, right? It's just melted sugar. Okay. It definitely does not smell like the candle. It smells like caramel. It smells like, well, it makes sense. Caramelized sugar. I hear the wax bubbling down here. So we're almost ready to go. That is a very interesting smell. Um, if anybody, uh, I'm gonna put this on the, on the hot plate when I take that wax off. See if we can actually melt these down. Uh, but has anyone made a, a, a jelly bean dessert 
using, uh, you know, for Easter time, like a creme brulee or some kind of cookie, just using jelly beans. Um, let me actually, can I, can I give these a taste? It's hot. It's hot. Look at this. We're going to be talking about candles in a second, folks. Hold on. Oh. oh, I'm not a big, oh, oh, hot. I'm not a big sugar person. I don't, I don't, I don't eat, I don't eat a lot of candy. But I'm telling you, if there wasn't bubble gum flavor in here, that is actually incredibly sweet but delicious so the aromatics didn't work it smelled like caramel it didn't smell like the candle but every now and then i like to bring out the fire all right all right folks we have melted wax now can you hear that this is so just as a reminder this is Pumpkin Wreath, now a retired uh, fan favorite for so many folks. I'm going to move my computer for a second. I do not want to get melted wax on my computer. So, this might be a little disastrous. I should have a funnel. Look at that. Can we see that? That is melted pumpkin wreath, folks. You know what I'm going to do? Let's do this. All right. So again, make sure the candle, uh, especially the wick, is centered exactly where you need it to be. Oh man, I really should have a funnel for this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, let's pop the lid on here. Let's get rid of this. Woo, that's hot. Um, so what we have, can you see that? Let's bring the, the camera in just a little bit. So what we've done is filled in the space. Um, uh, around the pillar that we sunk in there. Now, a lot of people just melt the entire candle down, put in a new wick. There's no reason to do that. All I did was heat up this wax. I didn't exude, or I didn't really expend any of the fragrance oils. I just melted it. If I left it on that hot plate for a while, all of the oils would have sapped out. But, um... What this will do is, um, hopefully, because if you got too much of the oil uh, out of that wax, uh, the core, that little pillar in the center, is not going to burn evenly. So we're going to let this cool down, and uh, we're going to light this puppy up, and I'll prove to you that this candle will be completely fix ready to go in a brand new jar I just want to make sure that that um, the wick is centered let me do this put the lid on hot 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 All right, 
Very cool. Very cool. Where's the computer? All right, so I had the hot plate down there. Let me put this onto the hot plate. Let's see if we can actually melt down those jelly beans. I'm gonna lower the heat. How are we all doing here? Oh, and Jody's in the house. Jody, I got uh, the pumpkin wreath. I picked the pumpkin wreath jar just for you because Jody uh, received, I guess it was in the mail, um, a pumpkin wreath uh, Yankee candle that was broken. Uh, Chris, Chris asks, Shane, will you be doing Easter basket and rainbow shake evaluations? Um, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I, it, it depends. If it is, it's going to not be before Easter. Uh, I, I've, especially on the, the, the main channel here, I, I've purposely taken a little bit of break from Yankee Candle. Um, I've talked about this before. It's not like I have anything against Yankee Candle. You guys know I'm a, a Yankee Candle enthusiast. But, um, you know, sometimes you just need to take a break from things that you enjoy. So, uh, I, I've purposely stayed away from um, the spring previews when they came out in December 26 from Yankee Candle. I also uh, did not, uh, I've since smelled some of the new candles for 2019, but I really haven't, uh, you know, jumped in deep. Usually I'm hunting these candles down months and months before they're ever released. But like I said, I needed a little bit of a break and I feel like as time goes on, people are talking about the candle sooner and sooner and sooner. I mean, people are already talking about Halloween Yankee Candle. And you know what, it's just like, <sighs> there's only a threshold of how much I can take, you know, it's just too soon for that, those kinds of spoiler alerts and stuff like that. So, I will get the brunch collection, I will get the spring candles eventually, I will talk about them, um, but uh, as far as the Easter candles, I do not think I'll be talking about the Easter fragrances from, from Yankee Candle before uh, Easter of this year. I apologize for that, but then again, there's so many other YouTubers out there who've already posted their evaluations their reviews, their thoughts, their opinions. I hear some jelly beans crackling on the hot plate. What else do we have? However, we will talk about this. Who has this candle? Uh, this is uh, a candle that's really only going to find at the outlets. Uh, it is called Happy, Happy Easter. One of those very simplistic labels really pretty Easter spring color. You know, we all know bunny cake. Bunny cake is all over the outlets these days. All over, it's all over the outlets. Bunny cake is like this beautiful jelly bean coconut cake experience. Um, and then we have the new Yankee candle, uh, Easter candles. We had uh, uh, um, marshmallow chicks. Then we had peeps, which in my opinion were different. We had jelly beans and then the new jelly beans, which in my opinion were different. Make sure you check out my videos on those. I posted uh, some Easter videos in the past couple of years, but happy Easter. I just happened to have this. And uh, when I was looking for stuff to talk about today, I'm like, eh, it's Easter, right? Let's break this out. I, I can't even remember what this smells like. The jelly beans are sizzling crackling and popping <sighs> does anybody have this candle happy Easter I really don't remember this one okay so um, I don't necessarily think about Easter when I smell this I do think about spring to me there's uh, two things going on here uh, two major contrasting uh, factors. We have springtime green grassy, but not like fresh cut grass or wet grass or lawnmower, you know, the stuff underneath, stuck underneath the lawnmower. Not, not like that, not that heavy green. This is more of that fluffy fabric softener, chlorophyll, 
green meadow, grassy, uh, or uh, wild, wild uh, flower stems, the greenage, the vegetation of spring. Uh, after the spring showers, the smell of uh, uh, the saturated greens out in the meadow. It's a very pretty, very um, um, green and, uh, and soft floral springtime aroma contrasted with a melon, melon, yes, a melon rind. Think about, not watermelon, but you know, right when you get to the rind. You know, your parents, when you're kids, they say, don't eat the, the rind, uh, it'll make you feel sick. But it actually tastes kind of good. It's tart, but it's not as sweet as the red part of the watermelon. Or, uh, it's hard not to be influenced by the color, but definitely honeydew melon here too. Uh, you know, a honeydew melon, Maybe a little bit of underripe honeydew melon when it's not super sweet yet. That's actually really, really nice. Uh, again, I don't necessarily think of Easter like crazy as much as I think of spring, but this is like uh, a melon, uh, a, a very, uh, very, very, very uh, sweet and tart melon beverage you know, uh, w while you're hanging out in the country kitchen. It smells a little bit like fabric softener, the greens and the florals. I'm glad I brought that, brought that out. Happy Easter. Is there a year on this? This is a 2018 pour. I must have obviously picked this up last year. Happy Easter. Uh, do you guys have that? And if you do, what do you think? I think it's time that we do a mail unboxing. I haven't done mail unboxings in a long time. Um, and I think that uh, I show you some candles that I have received uh, from uh, very, uh, you know, companies that, uh, uh, that are friends of mine, those, of, uh, those who are viewers of my channel and they want me to talk about their products. Uh, I have some here, but I have, I actually smell those already. I have one that has not been opened. Now look at this. We're getting, we're going to melt down these jelly beans. That smells really good. Okay, I mean, I know this is silly. I know this is silly, folks. But this is actually really, if this was, if this smell, if this was the aroma of a candle, this would be so much more authentic than this. I mean, I love this jelly bean candle. But what's amazing about this is I'm smelling like pear and bubble gum and black licorice. I'm smelling really tart. I'm smelling really sweet. You can't smell tart and sweet, but you know what I mean, a perceived tartness and sweetness. It, I think what, what, what is missing from jelly bean candles is the whole concept that when you take a handful of jelly beans, you're getting a whole bunch of different flavors. And that is what's amazing about this. It's a conglomeration, uh, a cornucopia of different uh, flavors and aromatics. I'm really glad. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. It's okay, though. Um, but I'm glad we're doing this. Let me put this back in the hot plate and let's melt that down. That was really hot, but I did not burn myself. Blue Bottle Coffee, uh, not a sponsor. Uh, how are we all doing down here? Uh, Gregory Anderson says, it may be silly, but it's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gregory. Uh, I really appreciate that. Simple Super Arts and Crafts, Monica Carlson, my sister-in-law in the house. Uh, everyone say hello to uh, M Monica. Uh, she is, uh, it's always great to have a sibling. And that's, and we have Mr. 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 Kevin. Mr. Kevin is in the house. Uh, wow, uh, thank you so much. Uh, for for joining in a lot of uh, YouTube uh, my YouTube favorite folks joining in uh, another uh, wonderful uh, inspirational uh, YouTube evaluator uh, we all know Mr. Kevin um, and uh, he mentioned Pee Wee Herman oh yeah that is a legit 1987 
uh, pull string uh, Pee Wee Herman doll. Uh, I had a Pee Wee Herman themed birthday party when I was a child. Well, my brother did, but uh, uh, we, we went all out, Pee Wee's Playhouse. And that was actually, uh, I think I, I, that, that, that's when I got that. I keep the good stuff. I keep the nostalgic stuff. I don't get rid of it. Monica says, where did I get the Blue Bottle? I ordered it, Monica. I am a subscriber to Blue Bottle Coffee. Uh, Blue Bottle Coffee is out of Oakland, California, although there are a lot of um, uh, Blue Bottle Roasters, coffee roasters throughout the country now. But um, if you're a subscriber, they, they really save you money, excuse me, on uh, the shipping costs. Let's keep this going. Let's keep this going. What we're doing, melting jelly beans. We got a candle that's fixing itself over here. I said we're going to do an unboxing. That's what I said. And again, I have to keep plugging this. The whole reason why I am on this channel today is that I am looking for help. I am asking for your help. My second channel, which is a very relaxed, intimate channel that's all live content. This channel right here, The Candle Enthusiast, is where I put all of my edited content. Things that I edit, I put a long time into making uh, candle videos, travel videos. But my live channel, aromatically speaking, um, again, it's an intimate channel, so I don't have a lot of subscribers, but YouTube just changed their policy. If you do not have, I'm not threatening you with a knife, uh, I'm just holding the knife. If YouTube said if you don't have a thousand subscribers, you cannot uh, go live like I right now, like I am right now, using a mobile device. And that's my, I, I prefer to go uh, live using mobile devices. So I could be inside, I could be outside, I could be anywhere I want. I could bring, uh, I could do a live inside of the Yankee Candle Village or any Yankee Candle storefront. Uh, so please, uh, if you could find it in your heart, swing over to Aromatically Speaking, my second YouTube channel. Please subscribe. And if you have any friends, uh, folks who are interested in uh, candles uh, or just like to join in on these live shows, please spread the word, spread the love. If we can get to a thousand subscribers, I don't have to stop. This has been a tradition now for almost two years where I go live every Sunday and we sit here and we chat, we open up candles, we talk about candles, we set things on fire, we have a good old time. And right now I'm in a position where uh, I can't, I can't uh, go live on my live channel, which is very upsetting. Uh, YouTube just unfortunately finds more and more ways to punish, I don't want to say punish, but uh, really uh, hurt uh, small modest YouTubers while uh, always granting um, those who have millions of subscribers with privileges that they don't necessarily need. Okay, what did I just open? This is a, this is a candle that was not sent to me from the UK, but it's a UK candle company. Um, forgetting her name right now, but uh, a very uh, lovely lady reached out to me uh, via Instagram. Uh, she asked me if I would uh, do an unboxing of one of her products on my uh, live channel. I said, absolutely. She sent, uh, sent uh, the candle, but she sent it from Amazon. So this came not from, again, I forget her name. Um, uh, hopefully uh, there's a letter in here I can I can give her a shout out but uh, this was sent to me via Amazon because the candles are available via Amazon because you don't want them to ship their candles to you from the UK if you're in the US right this is a really big box I thought there would be more than one candle Ooh, I do not know what the name of that company means. This box. This is not the company's fault, but this is Amazon, man. Are you kidding me, Amazon? How? You sent, Amazon, you sent this to me in the biggest box in the world. 
and misses the kind of damage? That is really upsetting. That's not the company's fault. The company being, uh, help me out. I'm not even. I'm not even sure what the meaning of the word is, but I can't pronounce it. Pronounce it. Uh, uh, God, how do? Panacea. Pe, pe, penis, ah, panacea. That's so wrong. I, can't, I. I. I wish I could put a little flair or an accent on that, uh, but I don't know what the meaning. If anyone wants panacea, so it sounds like I had it right. So, Bren, do you know? Do you do you know what the, the, that uh, what that means? Panacea is that a, is that a name? Is that a constellation? Is that like a is that a word that I should know? It says right here: candle component, wooden wick, a hundred percent soy wax, essential oils. Essential oils uh, meaning oils are extracted literally from. Uh, the items um, um, uh, for, from the aromatics in the candle, meaning they're not artificial fragrance oils made in a laboratory. Essential oils are extracted literally from the thing that it smells like. Follow me? 100% um, soy wax, essential oil, candle holder, frosted glass. So the box is great, packaging is wonderful, Right now, I'm just upset with Amazon. Whoa. Wow, I can smell that for sure. Um, there is not. There's no fragrance notes here, which I prefer. Oh, that is really nice. Um, you have to be a springtime lover uh, out, excuse me, out in the field, out in the meadow, dandelions, wildflowers, tall blades of grass, dew, uh, mountain dew, not mountain dew the soda, but dew all over the place, uh, and be able to handle uh, the pungent, beautiful nature of the outdoors in the spring. If you're a little bit sneezy, if you have those, you know, those allergies, Especially since these are essential oils. This might be a little bit difficult for you, but let's try to break this down. Uh, big time white musk, white floral musk. I'm saying it all the time, white musk. Um, white musk, right? Is anyone, uh, Yovan, right? Is anyone familiar with this? This is, uh, they make this for men and women. This is uh, the woman. The women's version, which I do think men could certainly wear this. Uh, white musk is, is simply just, uh, whew, man, yeah, this is honestly uh, totally uh, something I think a man could wear here. I highly recommend checking this out, uh, Yovan White Musk. But this is a great example if you really want to understand uh, what white mu musk is. Again, white musk, other words, floral musk. It's musk made with florals, right? Not like in the old days with muskrats, musk deer. This doesn't necessarily smell like that new car smell, the leather musk or the rose musk. This smells like very uh, sweet, uh, fruity, uh, powdery uh, florals, uh, carnations. Uh, think of even things like baby's breath. Baby's breath uh, sometimes, you know, a lot of people don't like the, the aroma of baby's breath, but to me that is a great example of white musk. Uh, so, a f very, uh, very soft, powdery floral aroma. Creamy, creamy. So, imagine we went to the florist, we have a bunch of white florals. Uh, we chop them up, we put them into a bowl, and then we load, we load up say an aluminum bowl. We got white florals in here and we load this up with a vanilla extract or maybe even like fresh vanilla bean, Madagascar vanilla, right? A really exotic vanilla aroma uh, and some uh, dairy, some heavy cream. There's a creamy vanilla uh, softness to this candle that really uh, softens up the power of the florals and uh, 
because it actually is the only thing that's mentioned on here. This candle is called Calming Tubros. Tubros uh, is, uh, is a musky floral. Uh, I'm not sure what family it falls into. Um, think of Lily of the Valley. Uh, I'm not saying they're exactly the same, but if you don't know what Tubros smells like, think of Lily of the Valley. Uh, it's not a very pungent Lily, but it has that cloyingly sweet aromatic to it. Very nice. Um, if you are into um, uh, perfume, candles, uh, you know, this is a beautiful, this would be a perfect bathroom candle, you know, bubble bath night with a glass of sparkling wine, uh, especially because this is a, looks like a very soft wax. It is very soft. I just touched it gently and left my fingerprint. Uh, wooden wick, uh, which I'm, I'm a fan of. You know, we just don't see it enough. Um, unfortunately, uh, I always ask folks who send me products to send me information on the products. Um, um, it was like a price point, availability. Um, I don't know how much this candle costs, uh, but what I can say is if you're interested, uh, like I said, very, very nice. I, I don't know if she was uh, the representative of the company, if she was the owner of the company. I don't know. Um, but very, very uh, uh, sweet lady uh, reached out to me and uh, asked me if I would create a video uh, uh, on this candle. Uh, I said uh, what I would do is an unboxing, and then uh, sometime soon I will uh, cover this in an edited video, and I certainly will. This is something I would like to burn and talk about it post-burn instead of just smelling it cold because these perfume candles have the tendency to really um, be powerhouses. Um, if you have a very large bathroom or if you have very tall ceilings, something like this, candles like Votivo, um, other luxury candles, um, um, you know, those are the kind of candles that could really, really uh, fill up a large space with aroma without being too dominating. Oh man, oh man, look, look out now. We have, we may have overdone it just a little bit. That is, that doesn't look pleasant. but it smells great. Oh my God, can we see that? This, this, is anybody candle maker out there? Any candle makers? Th this, if you're a candle maker, go into your kitchen, get some jelly beans, do what I just did, give this a sniff, and turn this smell into a candle. I am still smelling fruity, uh, all different kinds of fruits, and then different kinds of weird jelly bean aromas. I'm still getting that black licorice, but what's really nice is those sugars, like when you're making caramel, what I should have done is add a little bit of butter to this, right? A little bit of butter uh, may have helped the caramelization process. What I'm smelling is uh, you know, like a melted caramel. Like we could dump this on top of popcorn to make like a caramel covered popcorn. We could, um, uh, like I said, make some kind of creme brulee desserts. I'm gonna let this cool down and then maybe I'll give it a taste for fun. Why not, why not? So once again, panacea. Uh, thank you for sending me this candle. I will reach out. Again, I'm sorry, I don't, can't remember your name, um, but I will reach out, and then hopefully one day we can uh, maybe uh, do a larger video together. Uh, but it certainly has my recommendation. Okay, we're still, that candle is still solidifying. Uh, we need, that needs a little bit more time. So what else are we talking about? Mail unboxing, blow torches, jelly beans, we've done all that. 
So let me talk about, let's talk about Yankee Candle. Um, um, uh, some more Yankee Candle, then we'll go into some other companies again. Um, some recent finds that uh, I, um, well, here's a recent, I shouldn't say some, because it really is only one. So a recent find that uh, I came across uh, absolutely blew me away. If you were a Yankee Candle fan, and um, if you shop at Yankee Candle outlets, uh, this is one, uh, it's a candle that is not going to be available in retail. It is uh, an outlet exclusive, and uh, I have to share it. In fact, I bought a, a bunch because, uh, just in case it disappears, I wanted to have a few to put up on uh, the Candle Enthusiast eBay uh, uh, page, uh, which I post some of my candles from time to time. All the money goes into uh, uh, the production of my videos. Uh, so if you guys know me, you know that I'm a fan, a big fan. Please check out my video on this candle. It's one of my favorite videos. Um, uh, the, the end result was uh, so much fun because uh, completely unscripted, but it, it was uh, actually a very moving video for me. I know it's weird to say moving for a, a, a video based on a candle, but I went out and about and uh, actually talked to uh, a gentleman who owned a delicatessen for many, many years and I had him smell this candle. This was a, a 2017 spring UK release called Olive and Time, and it's just one of those candles that people are going to look at and be like, why would I possibly want that candle? But I'm a huge advocate, huge advocate of this candle, Olive and Time. However, um, because I love it so much, I've been trying to recommend, because this was a part of the same collection, I think, I think, I think, please, if I'm wrong, don't judge me. Um, but this was a part of the same collection, and it's called Sea Salt and Sage. Um, and this has been very hard to find, um, and for whatever reason, uh, they they uh, they poured more last year, and they're hitting the outlets. And what's great is that they're not even seconds. Um, and this is a beautiful smell because right here we have olive and thyme, which is such an accurate name. But this is a very briny, salty, very herbal in the herb garden uh, 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 aroma, right? Um, when I was at the Culinary Institute of America, we had this massive herb garden, massive, uh, on the hillside. There were 16 different varieties of sage. So when you're cooking in the kitchen, you could just go outside, pick all the herbs that you want, go back inside, uh, but you had so many options, 16 different varieties of sage in one garden and uh, that this candle really brings me back to that experience walking around that herb garden and again that sea, excuse me that sea salt kosher salt whatever you want to call it uh, that saltiness that minerality uh, that brininess uh, that saline aroma perfect contrast this is a garden a fresh garden candle this is in the kitchen. Olive oil, cracked black pepper, lemon zest, lemon juice. This is an in the kitchen candle. But if you have both of these and you burn them together, oh man, oh man, a uh, huge, huge experience. So because I love this candle so much, I really wanted to uh, point that out. If you have this candle, especially if you purchase, I know a lot of you folks purchase this candle because I've recommended so much. I want you to look for this sea salt and sage and burn these together. Now with that said, let me just show you this. This is the candle that again, based on the label, because you can only buy it in an outlet, you can so easily pass this by. It looks so boring. Sorry, Yankee, but it looks really boring. Um, but give it a sniff. Um, man, you know, if you have, if you spend a lot of time in the kitchen, 
uh, when you're a child, if your grandmother or your mother or your father, whoever it may be, was a cook and they used high quality um, ingredients, herbs. Uh, my, my grandmother, uh, Italian grandmother, her kitchen smelled absolutely amazing. And um, this candle right here is just absolutely blowing me away. I'm not kidding. I bought four of these. I might even buy more. Um, this is called Olive Oil and Thyme. So not olive and thyme, olive oil and thyme. Now, that made me think because I said that this olive and thyme smelled like olive oil. It does. It kind of smells like Spanish olive oil. It's a little bit spicy. has a little bit of that cracked black pepper aroma, which is typical of uh, Spanish um, Spanish uh, olive oil. But this candle is insane. This is, on cold sniff, this is a high intensity candle. High intensity. I don't usually say high intensity often. I usually say medium plus, high minus. This is a high intensity candle. And it is like pesto. It is got that lime juice. It's got that fruity, not necessarily spicy olive oil and herbs galore. Well, pesto, uh, but that fresh herb section in your grocery store or the 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 olive bar, right, at your del delicatessen, right? Even if you don't like olives, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, right? Um, but that lovely smell of the brininess uh, all of those wonderful pickled items uh, at that olive, olive bar. And this has got that super refreshing, not lemon pledge, super refreshing lemon juice, lemon zest, aromatic. This is one of the greatest in the kitchen candles that I have smelled in the longest time and it came from a Yankee Candle outlet, and I got it for $8. I haven't burned it yet, but like I said, I have four. I will be burning one very soon. I highly recommend, if you go to Yankee Candle outlet, buy one to hold on to, buy one to burn. Uh, like I said, uh, when we think about home fragrance, we think about bathroom, we think about the living room, we think about the bedroom, but we don't think about the kitchen enough. This is a perfect kitchen candle, um, and we all need kitchen candles in our collection. So olive oil and thyme, that is a soft wax, uh, soy wax blend, two wicks, um, and check it out. Yeah, so I mean, it's not even a second, but it's, again, an outlet candle. And it's, again, just to be clear, it is not the UK olive and thyme candle. Simil similar. Similarities. It's not the same candle. Has anyone purchased or smelled that candle, burned that candle? Vagabond Wolf. Here's a new name. I don't think we've been acquainted. Never too soon for Halloween Salem candles. Which City Wicks? Which City Wicks is offering, uh, which City Wicks, if you don't know, uh, one of my favorite uh, micro batch, small batch candle companies based out of Salem, Massachusetts. My good friend, the proprietor, Liz Frazier. Uh, she has put uh, the Sea Witch candle back uh, on the website. And she has told me that she's going to be pulling a lot of her popular fragrances off the website and making them uh, in the shop exclusive. She's got a shop in Salem. So make sure you swing over. First of all, swing over, check out her Instagram account, follow her, uh, tell her I sent you. Uh, that always helps us out this way. We can do more and more collaborations with Witch City Wicks. Uh, but if you want to stock up on Witch City Wicks, now is the time. She's, uh, she might even have some sales on her Valentine's Day candles, which are awesome. Um, Uh, does it smell burnt at all? I'm guessing Carol's talking about the jelly beans. I think I over I think I overheated them just a little bit. 
Uh, but burns in not a bad way, like a creme brulee way. If we're talking about the jelly beans, I hope I'm talking about the right thing. Hopefully I can find that one of my outlets. I love olive and thyme, so I bet it's fabulous. Uh, Carol, I hope you can find it too. Uh, if you need help, let me know. I'm always, it's always more, um, uh, it's always a pleasure for me to, to help out. It's difficult to get sea salt and sage in Scotland. I managed to perch wax melts in this fragrance. Sharon, wow. Um, uh, good, good for you. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining in. Scotland, I don't think we have a lot of Scotland viewers. Uh, one day I'll have to uh, visit Scotland. Definitely on the bucket list. Uh, we were just in Lake George at the outlet. I love the Lake George outlet. Love the folks. Good friends with all of the associates. Always have great things. Um, uh, if you're in the Lake George area, uh, make sure you swing over to the Lake George outlet, Yankee Candle. And uh, just drop my name uh, because I, they really are. I've uh, become very, uh, really close friends with uh, the folks there. They help me out when they get some good stuff in stock. But anyway, we were just in Lake George at the outlets and they had a bunch of olive and thyme candles. Uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, a lot of the, the outlets are, are, are uh, I don't know, they just got a wave of, of the olive and thyme candles. Um, I saw a couple outlets that were offering a promotion. You spent $35, you can get the olive and thyme for eight bucks. Midsummer's night, uh, Midsummer's Night is also divine. That's a must try. Yes, it is. Um, and I always show this one off. I hope you don't mind, everybody. Uh, but since we are on a different channel, uh, check this out, Sharon. Um, here is, uh, look at this. This is a, uh, one of the, my black bands of Midsummer's Night. And the reason why I'm showing this, uh, black bands, just in case you don't know, are, are um, anywhere from late 80s to uh, 2003. Uh, Yankee Candles. Uh, that's when they had these black bands here. Uh, but this is an early early black band, uh, probably early 90s. The reason why I'm showing this is because this still smells amazing. It hasn't degraded at all, uh, and it, it's, it smells lovely. So it's always great when you have a, a fragrance that you love, and you know that it'll last over a decade, sometimes over two, sometimes over three decades. Uh, uh, early 80s Yankee Candle right there. Guess what? It smells amazing. Hello, Shane. Hello, everyone. How you doing, Nancy? And I see, hi, Cookie. Is Cookie Hill in the house? Cookie Hill? Is it Cookie? It's not Cookie Hill, but it's Cookie 349. Um, hello, Cookie 349. I wonder if that is Cookie Hill. Cookie Hill is a, uh, was a follower. I haven't seen Cookie around in a long time, but we have another cookie in the house. Let's keep this going. Let's keep this going. Um, we have a lot here to talk about. So here's some other candles that were sent to me. Um, I want to highlight some of these. Again, one more time, I just have to promote this. Uh, I'm sorry if you've been watching for a while and you heard me say this a bunch of times, but the reason why I am on my main channel today doing this uh, Sunday Live is because I'm trying to raise subscribers for my second channel. Second channel is called Aromatically Speaking. It's a completely live channel where I go live from here in the studio. I go live from Yankee Candle Village. I go live from uh, the destinations that I travel to. Um, uh, we need to raise a thousand subscribers for that channel. I purposely kept that an intimate, small channel. Uh, but YouTube just changed their policies, and if you don't have a thousand subscribers, you cannot go live on a mobile device. And because I do a lot of my lives on my mobile device, outside, out and about, I can't go live on my live channel. So please, if you can find it in your heart, please, please swing over to my second channel, Aromatically Speaking and hit subscribe. And if you could, uh, please spread the word, spread the love. We need about 300 subscribers and then uh, I'm at a thousand and then I can go live and create more of this live content uh, whenever we feel up to it. 
Uh, a good friend of mine, Jessica from Cottage Wix. I produced a video on Cottage Wix a while ago, but it's I'm about it's about time that I um, uh, I talk uh, more about this candle company because Jessica is really creating not only amazing candles, but the concepts, the designs. Uh, she is an artist of many different uh, mediums, uh, and uh, and. Uh, I just, I, 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 I can't say enough about uh, Jessica from Cottage Wicks. Again, check Cottage Wicks out on Instagram. Follow them, take a look around, see what they have, and always, please, make sure you let, uh, let them know that I sent you. Again, it helps, helps, helps us out, because the more they know that uh, I'm sending people over, the more collaborations we can work on. But here is one of... Uh, uh, my favorite candles of hers. I talked about this candle. I burned probably two. Uh, she just sent me a bunch of uh, new stuff and um, one of the new candles that she sent was one that uh, she knew was my favorite. It's called Mystic Forest. Come on, look at this mason jar. I love it. Now it's important about Cottage Wicks is that their aroma profiles are very botanical driven fragrances, which uh, is a breath of fresh air. I mean, they. she makes everything from Halloween fragrances. She has a whole Alice in Wonderland um, um, uh, line, but, uh, you know, th these are very botanical, but non-allergy provoking candles. And I love these very fantasy-like uh, names, like Mystic Forest. Mystic Forest, uh, the, the fragrance notes, earthy amber, moss with woody spruce. But there's so much more going on. But let me show you this. Check this out. Actual real dried botanicals uh, going to be uh, uh, infused, inoculated, whatever you want to call it, topped uh, with, uh, within the soy wax. These burn beautifully. And yes, uh, those botanicals, I see some lavender on the top of there. There's some petals of some kind of uh, florals on there that does add to the aromatic experience. And man, oh man. I mean, Mystic Forest could not be a better name for this candle because it is an outdoor experience, but this is not like being deep in the forest you know, in the mountains and you smell, even though I love the smell of dirt and mud and earthiness and minerality and rocks, to me when I smell this, I didn't want to see the movie Legend, you remember Legend? Tim Curry and and and, 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 and Tom Cruise or, you know, the, those fantasy movies with the rainbows and the unicorns, like that's what this smells like. It smells like you're sitting by a babbling brook, fresh mist and moss and the, 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 the minerality from uh, the creek and the pebbles, uh, this, and, and again, you know, a patch, a patch of wildflowers um, that are very soft. Uh, again, I think lavender is something that is not on this, uh, in the description here, but the, this, this lavender aroma, a very soft, fruity, even slightly citrusy, uh, aroma. This, like if this was a bar of soap, and they do make bath and body products, but if this was a bar of soap, I would be sold in a harpy. Uh, so definitely earthy, definitely outdoors, but again, in that very fantasy-like uh, 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 um, unicorn fantasy rainbow outdoor forest experience. Fresh moss, fresh, uh, like I said, pebbles inside of the, the, the freshwater creek. Um, woodsy spruce. I get that. Woodsy spruce. To me, well, it says woodsy spruce. I was going to say, it doesn't really smell like spruce needles, but to me, it's like more of like a cedar, fresh wood, cedar smell. You know, um, really, really nice. It almost smells like, um, 
man, um, how do I say this with, without making it sound wrong? Like this, like this definitely smells like, th this is something I would, I don't wear cologne, uh, a lot of, I don't wear fragrance on my body, I just don't do it. Uh, but if that did come in some form of spray or cologne, uh, body spray, that is something I would wear. Um, and Brent says, I just moved and haven't had time to post, but I'll be back soon. So Brent and I, apparently both of us, have been taking a little bit of break. Uh, Brent, uh, I'm sure everyone will be happy to see. I hope uh, your move went well. Uh, let's keep this going, man. Let's keep this going. So uh, Cottage Wicks, check them out on Instagram. She takes really good photos, too. Do we have any Edgar Allan Poe fans out there? Edgar Allan Poe fans. And if we do, what is your favorite Edgar Allan Poe? Uh, short story? Poem? Short work? He didn't do really any longer pieces. Mine's, mine's always been the Telltale Heart. Um, always been my favorite. But the reason why I ask is because there was a, there was a video I wanted to make uh, for so long. And I kept telling people I was going to do it. And I never, I never got to it. I never got to it. Just like a lot of things that I say uh, that I'm going to do. And I just didn't get to it. Look at this. Um, beautiful gift from a fan. Uh, Nevermore. Talk about Edgar Allan Poe. So I keep this little ornament next to my Edgar Allan Poe candle collection. There's a few here that are missing. But I do have three Edgar Allan Poe themed candles from three different companies. Uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's take a look at these and break them down and see um, uh, if you're an Edgar Allan Poe fan and you can only buy one of these, which ones should you buy? Uh, let me introduce them all first. This is probably the easiest one to find. It's the highest production one. Um, you can even find this at Barnes & Noble, at least this company. We're probably all familiar with this company, Patty, Patty Wax. Uh, um, pa pa Patty Wax, that's just, the, the, it's not Patty Wax Candles, but Patty Wax, uh, this is the, the, the library collection, they have uh, different authors, uh, Charles Dickens being another one, Emily Dickinson maybe, I don't know, uh, but very nice box, we have some artwork, um, uh, uh, a label that, um, let me read it. Born uh, 19th of January, 1809, died 7th of October, 1849, Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe. A short story writer, poet, critic, and editor, Edgar Allan Poe left us with tales of horror and mystery that remain as bone-chilling today as they were in the 1800s. Paddywax, so beautiful box. Uh, this is going to retail, I think if you find it uh, at a good price, 1999. Um, which to me that is a that is a good price for a candle of this quality love the box love the box uh, let's pull this out so I, let me introduce the other candles though before I smell anything um, which city wicks which city wicks this one is not in production but you never know um, that uh, which city wicks you know she always uh, surprises us uh, with sometimes bringing a candle back for a short period of time. This candle's got a lot of history to it. Uh, it was a huge limited edition success for Witch City Wicks. Um, and then, um, it's simply called Edgar Allan Poe. Beautiful label. Um, uh, again, 100% soy wax. Um, but it was such a hit. It was a limited edition, but it was such a hit and Liz wanted to bring it back, but what happened was they retired the fragrance company that was one of the ingredients, retired one of the fragrances, the key fragrances that went into this candle. So she couldn't even make it anymore. So it took back breaking work and effort, searching and searching for her to find a replacement 
for the fragrance oil that was retired so that she could bring this back. I do not think it's currently available. Um, if you go into the shop in Salem, you may get lucky. Um, there's an Edgar Allan Poe candle and there's also a Nathaniel, uh, um, not a Nathaniel Hawthorne, um, an HP Lovecraft uh, sister candle of this. So we'll smell that second. And then a Rhode Island company. A lot of you are huge fans of this company. Uh, Burke and Hare. Um, this candle uh, uh, was given to me by the proprietor, Erica, um, with a bunch of other wonderful products. I reviewed this candle, or evaluated this candle, inside the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in New York. Check out that video. This one is called Never more. Uh, it currently, I think, does have a different label. Um, but Burke and Hare, very, very small production company. Uh, well, actually, probably right around the same production as Witch City Wicks. So let me smell all these real quick. Let's break it down. Starting with the patty wax uh, on that frosted, look at that frosted black glass. It has a, a very dark amber tinge to it purposely crooked label, which says, all that we see or seem is a dream within a dream. What, what short story is that from? Huge high five, fan would get that right. Don't Google it, don't Google it. Uh, again, called uh, Edgar Allan Poe. This is a very soft, wax candle right um it says a hundred it's it said 100 percent soy did it not i'd be shocked because i wouldn't guess that it does not say oh, it does say it's a soy wax candle it doesn't say 100 percent, but it looks very very soft You know, I never like to say anything. I, you know, I always like to, tr uh, you know, I'm, I'm such a, you know, I try to keep my evaluations as positive as possible uh, because especially, you know, if a candle, I smell a candle and it's not my cup of tea, it doesn't mean it's not your cup of tea. So I keep all of my, my evaluations as objective as possible. But I always promise you guys that if a candle is just not, it's not that it's not that I don't enjoy it, but it's not performing. This could be a very old candle. I did think I, I think I got this on eBay, but my point is, this is just not this for for this kind of soft wax, um, and. Um, uh, for the price point and for the, the the reputation of this company, not a, this is a very low intensity right now. Uh, again, this could be two to three years old. This candle, I don't think it's that old, but it could be up to three years old. But that's not. A, I mean, to me, a candle should last longer than that. Again, I'm smelling this cold, but here's the thing. If I read this box, I, I really don't like to say bad things about candles. And I'm not, you know, maybe I'll bur burn this and it'll be a completely different experience. Cardamom absinthe sandalwood. Uh, I'm a huge, uh, I don't want to say a huge fan of absinthe. I, really appreciate the beverage. I don't drink it all the time, but when I was studying beverages, uh, it was something I was fascinated with. Don't smell any absinthe. Cardamom. I mean, the sandalwood I can get, um, that's a little bit disappointing. That's a little bit disappointing. If I ever do an evaluation of this candle, uh, like an edited video, I'm going to have to buy a new one. Has anyone had a better experience with that? I did get this on Amazon, I think. So you never know. You never know. Maybe it could have been a dud. Maybe that's why it was on Amazon in the first place. That's a sad way to start that. Uh, let's go into the Witch City Wicks. Again, love this company. Cannot say enough 
about this company. This is older too, so keep that in mind. Oh, I mean, bam, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you know, this is a huge company compared to, you know, you know, this is a one woman operation. Liz, one woman, does everything. Designs the labels, creates the recipes, you know. Uh, pours the wax that she ships them to. It's a one-woman show. She even runs this shop by herself, and she's incredibly talented. And here you have a company that every candle, you know, enthusiast pr is probably familiar with. And this candle is just as old. And holy moly, is this super, super powerful. So powerful that... <laughs> You know, you feel like you need to let it, like, breathe like a glass of wine. So, um, a very musky, masculine, um, not cologne, but clothing. I mean, think about Grandpa's Closet. Don't let that turn you off. I mean, we're talking about Edgar Allan Poe here. But I'm talking about, like, you know, just that, that classic, timeless... Uh, man, you know, Grandpa and his flannel, his flannel coat. I don't mean like body odor. I'm talking about just like uh, 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 an older school cologne fragrance. Um, back when colognes were a little bit more herbal and spicy, this definitely has a root system something pulled right out of the ground, roots and earth aroma to this. Um, what is the name of that cologne? Gray flannel. Folks, I'm telling you right now, uh, if your father wore this, if you wore this back in the 80s, uh, if you still wear it now, you can still buy it. But most likely, like, my dad would wear this when he was my age. Uh, this was a late 70s product, uh, gray flannel. Uh, uh, it's going to have a, a vetiver, which is very earthy, um, earthy, dirty smell, very manly smell, very herbal, uh, aromatic. A uh, bergamot is going to be in here. This is a manly, manly smell. This is like Wall Street circa late 70s, gray flannel. And that's kind of what I'm, you know, definitely what I'm getting here. Old school cologne and that peppercorn, cracked black peppercorn, got that nice spice to it. And musk, musk all the way. But again, musk is a tough concept, right? We talk about musk all the time and there's different kinds of musks. If you really want to trip someone up, uh, trip someone up, do this. I'm telling you, it's so much fun. Go into Macy's, the fragrance department. I'm not making fun of the folks who work at Macy's because this is a very hard concept. But go into Macy's, the fragrance department, and just very bluntly ask them, what is musk? Can you define the word musk? Not must, not M-U-S-T, musk, M-U-S-K. Can you define the word musk? and what it is, and uh, what qualifies as something being musky. Uh, you could do this at uh, a Yankee Candle, ask them, and again, I'm not making fun of anybody, but it's a very difficult topic, um, because it really comes down to, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a chemical engineer question. Uh, and, and where I'm going with this is that this has a muskiness to it, and to me, it's very clear what kind of musk. And I see Leslie's in the house. Leslie had this, I think Leslie had this candle before I had this candle. And not only that, she had the original uh, before, because uh, this was, the, I, this is the original and then I have one over there that's the second release. Um, but I think Leslie had this candle before me. She actually brought it to the Yankee Candle Village to let me smell it. Thank you, Leslie. Um, uh, but to me, this, like I said, um, we could talk about muskiness like a brand new car. We talked about floral musk like white musk. Uh, to me, this is Beauty and the Beast, Enchanted, Library, 
Bell, Di Walt Disney, Emma Watson, whatever you want to call it, this is that rosy musk, rosy musk, a fresh red rose. Those petals, you smell those, bam, that is uh, the epitome to me of uh, um, um, of a floral musk, uh, very different from any d other kinds of um, um, floral musks. It almost uh, rose musk can almost smell like um, like treated leather. Like if you walk into like a leather jacket store or a purse store and you're smelling all of that fresh treated leather muskiness. And bourbon barrel action. Bourbon barrel, yeah. Uh, I don't smell whiskey, I don't smell booze. Um, I think cognac was a description, a uh, fragrance note on this candle, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't smell any booziness, which is probably a good thing, but I do get that roasted bourbon barrel. Bourbon barrels inside. If you don't know this, they actually toast, set on fire inside of the barrel. They set the barrel on fire to give it that roasty, toasty, um, te um, 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 uh, not texture, but um, they roast inside of the barrel. So when they age uh, the beverage inside the barrel, that roasted, smoky flavor of the wood imparts itself into the whiskey beverage. We could talk about wine. They do this for wine, uh, anything that's aged in bourbon barrels. And to me, this smells like that inside of that smoky bourbon barrel, wine barrel, you name it. And here's the thing. If you don't know the inspiration of this candle, uh, Liz's inspiration was uh, Edgar Allan Poe was buried in Baltimore, Maryland. And um, there's, you know, there's this, you know, um, the story is where he's buried... Um, uh, mysteriously, for for decades and decades, a long time ago, a bottle of whiskey or cognac and some roses or flowers would be left by his grave on almost a nightly basis. But they could not find out who was leaving the, these these flowers and the cognac. They just would just kind of appear every night, and they never found out who was leaving. Uh, all of these flowers and, and booze to, uh, by the grave gravesite of Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, so now it's been, become the tradition for people who visit uh, the gravesite of Edgar Allan Poe to bring cognac, whiskey, absinthe. Absinthe was his uh, beverage of choice, and um, and uh, some flowers, and leave them for leave, leave it uh, leave it for uh, Mr. Poe in the middle of the night by his gravesite and that was the inspiration behind this candle um, those flowers uh, the booze again smell to me a little bit more like the bourbon barrel but also that old fashioned masculine uh, um, clothing slash cologne uh, very old fashioned uh, kind of masculine smell. This is not a cologne smell that we would find in a contemporary cologne store these days. Very hard to beat not only that concept, but that is a really, really beautiful smelling candle. What a beautiful candle for Halloween time, for ghost stories. If you have a library or lounge in your house, um, um, you know, uh, or if you live in an apartment and you want to make it feel like you, you know, um, you want to make your apartment smell like maybe what Edgar Allan Poe's small apartment smelled like, that's what I'm sure it smelled like. No absent though. Let's check out this one. Everyone hits that thumbs up button only if you're enjoying this video. Uh, if you're not enjoying it, there's no hit, no reason to hit that thumbs up, but the thumbs up button always really helps me out. And we're going to be checking out this pumpkin wreath candle in a little bit. It's getting very close uh, to being, it, I think it's already solidified, but let me just talk about this Burke 
and hair. Again, Instagram, look it up. Erica from Birkin Hair. Um, a, a very sweet woman. She uh, sent me a bunch of stuff. I talked about this candle a long time ago at the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. Let's see how this candle is different. So the patty wax didn't really have a smell. It's supposed to smell like absinthe cardamom and what was the other one? Absinthe cardamom and sandalwood. I didn't get really any of that. Um, uh, but the Witch City Wicks was spot on and very, it told me a story, which is one of Liz from Witch City Wicks, uh, her high points. She can tell stories with aromatics. But this one's called Nevermore by Burke and Hare uh, out of Rhode Island. It's nice to see that all of these are different because when you think of Edgar Allan Poe, right, what does everyone think about? They think about the absinthe, I don't know. Just by default, probably opium and and pipe tobacco. Um, uh, all three of these, even though the first one didn't have much of an aroma, are, are completely different. This one has a zesty, a zesty, uh, citrusy, obviously. Uh, uh, um, You know, really the first thing that comes through in, in, a, in, in a refreshing way, not like a lemon pledge zestiness. Oh, come on, pull it together. I had a bunch of things. Hold on. Um, a little bit spicy. Uh, definitely creamy. You know, this is just weird. And are the fragrance stones on here? Okay, so I said spicy, black pepper. Okay, definitely getting that teak wood. Tobacco, vanilla. Okay, so creamy. Okay, definitely getting the creamy. So I said, I said creamy. Uh, vanilla makes sense to me. Uh, does it say anything about citrus? It doesn't. Uh, but the, the spiciness is the, the black pepper. The teak wood makes sense. I mean, we could say teak wood, we could say sandalwood. Uh, an antiqued wood. But really bright uh, and zesty. And, you know, nevermore, we're talking about Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, right? So. I'm going to say right now that uh, this candle is probably medium minus intensity. It's not super strong. It does. It is a couple years old. Um, I'd say that, uh, you know, it says teak wood. To tobacco is the one thing I wish I got a little bit more of because um, I feel like that's the one thing uh, the other two do not have. Black pepper and vanilla. I would say all of those are fair fragrances, uh, fragrance notes. My, my, my issue here. It's a beautiful smelling candle, but in the context of the Raven, Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, or even just Edgar Allan Poe, I'm having a difficult time understanding the connection, the concept. Very pretty candle. It's actually really refreshing. Um, And it's a pretty, it's a pretty smell. Is pretty a good thing for Edgar Allan Poe? Like this smells. I mean, I would say this is not a male scent. If this was a cologne, this would definitely fall into the realm of, you know, a very pretty uh, perfume. So, very nice smelling candle. I think the, the description, the fragrance notes are spot on. Again, just to be, uh, you know, as picky as I possibly can, and I love Burke and Hare, nothing bad to say about them. It's really more of the, con uh, the concept, the, the theme, right? We're talking about the raven, which is a very, very, very big topic, right? Where you could take tons of inspiration from. Um, and if you didn't want to just stick with the raven, and you wanted to go with Edgar Allan Poe, there's so much um, 
so much to play with there, and I just don't see how this kind of bridges Edgar Allan Poe or The Raven with this fragrance. It's a very pretty smell. So, um, uh, we talked about three Edgar Allan Poe candles, and uh, the clear winner for me, and um, I really hope uh, uh, you can get your hands on this, uh, especially if you are the Edgar Allan Poe fan. I kind of knew this was going to happen. Which City Wicks, Edgar Allan Poe, that gets my votes um, by and large. Um, so, uh, I don't know. Send, send them an email, check the website, see if that ever becomes available. Uh, but that is a really nice candle. And if it ever does become available, don't just buy one. Are you kidding me? Don't buy one. How are we all doing here? We all hitting that thumbs up button? That really helps me out. I really have not been um, uh, paying attention to the comments, and I apologize. Uh, Cruise Bats. Uh, Morgan says, my dad wore gray flannel. So did my father. Um, um, uh, really brings a lot of memories. I love, I love that. You know, um, I have kind of, I have a basket here. I have a, kind of a collection of clones. Not that I wear them, but I like to have popular clones from different eras, different times, different years, so I can kind of cross-reference them. Um, you know, it's, you know, like I have um, whose father or mother, uh, they made a unisex one, uh, wore Holston. Holston. When's the last time you heard Holston before? Uh, but these these are so useful uh, when you're trying to train your nose or if you're trying to come up with oh, It just smells like the 80s um, If you're really trying to uh, You know trying to pinpoint a fragrance I'm just a nerd like that I suppose so Edgar Allan Poe that was fun. I was gonna do an edited video on that a Long time ago, and I never got around to it. I still will do it I just, I'm, I'm a little bit upset with that patty wax candle. I'm going to have to buy a new one. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Poe is tragically beautiful. Uh, yes, I would agree. Was it, pos was it possibly a mislabeled candle from B&H? Edgar Allan Poe. Um, I don't know. Leslie says I love Halston. Um, I have I have both Halston. There's Halston was it 112, and then the Halston Z14. Um, I'm telling you. And then come on, Stetson. Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie. If you wore this. Okay, it's okay. But I recommend that you put together a little uh, cologne collection so you can reference it. If you, you know, you're uh, an aromatic kind of person like me and you like to uh, kind of train your nose um, and keep familiar with these sorts of things. Let's keep this going. Did we go back to Yankee Candle? Uh, no, you know what? Let's do this. Check this out, folks. I'm going to wipe this off a little bit. So a little bit of melted wax on here. So remember, uh, this was a broken jar. Um, what we did was, uh, uh, I, t I broke the glass of the broken jar. I removed the hunk of wax. I shaved off the sides of the wax so that I could fit a small pillar of the wax inside there, I melted the wax that I shaved off and then poured it around the outer circumference. Check this out, folks. A broken kin. Uh, completely fixed. That wick is not perfectly placed. I apologize. I apologize. But look how perfect we'll get a little bit of the cloudy crystallization down there and it's all right um 
it was just the wax was a little bit too hot. But look how perfect that looks. Um, and trust me, it doesn't just look good. This will burn just fine. It might take a little bit of time for it to, to, to get it going. You know, wrap uh, some tin foil around it. Um, uh, even just like a sock if you want. Make sure it pulls out. Uh, but once it gets going, this will burn just like brand new. And then, where'd it go? Where did it go? I had the label, because the label says Merry Christmas. This is pumpkin wreath. But again, you can peel off that label of the, of the broken jar. Uh, you lose a little bit of that, was it goo, uh, goop, goo gone, whatever it is. Take off the adhesive of the label and then um, put a little bit more adhesive on that cleaned label, pop it on there, get the lid, and you have a fixed jar. Um, I think that's pretty cool, cool folks. Um, uh, please let me know if you have any questions about this. I guarantee you this will burn just like new. And you know what? I've been meaning to do this for a long time because that jar has been broken. So. I actually got something done while doing the live today for myself. Uh, Jody says, oh my God, fantastic Shane, thank you for showing, uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, showing this. Yeah, absolutely, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I have, a, you know, I work really hard on trying to fix these little issues, not little issues, sometimes very big issues. Uh, I just, I never try to, I don't want to sound like uh, Mr. Know-it-all, right? Um, so I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't show these little things that I do every now and then, but I thought that was a, a good thing to do today uh, because I've been meaning to do that for a long time. Nancy said, did you do that today? Did I miss it? You di uh, I did. Um, um, if you check out the, the video later on, uh, I'll show you step-by-step step how I fixed that candle. Um... And, um, and what's cool too, if, whether you have a two wick Yankee Candle tumbler and you want it in a house warmer jar, you can do exactly what I just did. Um, so that's it, really cool um, it, because it, it kind of becomes like a two wick, uh, almost like a country candle, Kringle country candle, two wick, house warmer shaped jar, a different kind of wax with two wicks. That's a fun thing to do um, if you want to transplant and t take the, the, the softer soy blend wax and put it into the house warmer jar. You could essentially follow the same steps as I showed you. It's, it, it really is uh, uh, cool uh, to do it. It's a little bit of work, but it's cool. All right, how are we doing on time? We're at 103 minutes. Uh, let me show you two other candle companies um, that uh, they sent me some, some products. And man, um, I love it when it works out this way. And uh, you know, when they, I, I, I get sent something and I really, really enjoy them. And this way I don't, you know, um, have to, you know, you know, email them and be like, ah, you know, sometimes I get duds in the mail and I don't want to say anything bad about a candle company. So when I get something that's good in the mail, I'm like, wow, this is great. I would be happy to promote this. Uh, well, th this is two, uh, two different circumstances. Uh, circumstances. This company is called a Big Dipper. Big Dipper Wax Works. Does anybody know this name? Big Dipper Wax Works. Um, this particular fragrance is called Rapture. Holy moly, the rapture. So we have a little bit of a biblical reference here. Uh, uh, rapture and um, the fragrance is patchouli and cassia or cassia. Cassia is uh, what we know as cinnamon. Um, we really, um, uh, what we call cinnamon in the United States is really not cinnamon. It's, it's, it's cassia. It's, it's, uh, it's, um, a different bark. It, 
it tastes the same. It's kind of like wasabi, right? There is no real wasabi in the United States. It's not exported from Japan. Uh, what we know as wasabi in the United States is horseradish and food coloring. Sorry to burst anyone's bubble. Uh, but uh, cassia and patchouli, that's an interesting combination. And rapture. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is, what is this, a 4.5? A 4.5 um, jar. This is a beeswax, a beeswax candle. Ooh, just open that blast in the face of aroma. Wow, wow. I mean, I have smelled this before. A little bit of a rattle. This candle's not old. Um, this is. Um, um, this is going to reach, it says burns for 24, 25 hours, um, blended from 100% essential oils. Uh, this intoxicating aroma arouses passion and excites the senses. Our pure essential oils are naturally extracted plant essence, essences, essences. Plant essence, wouldn't that be a better way of saying? It? Anyway, extracted plant essence uh, that support health and well-being. So a little bit of a, an aromatherapy approach here. Uh, and beeswax, and what's important to know about beeswax is the beeswax itself has its own aromatic profile. So anytime you, you burn a, bee, a beeswax candle, or even if it's not a scented candle and it's beeswax, it has its own smell, and it's actually really nice. Very nice smell. And oh man. Right off the bat, I want to I want to work with this company. I don't want to work for this company. I want to work with this company because uh, I have smelled a few of their products, but this one is insane. I mean, it just simply says patchouli and cassia, but man, is that, I mean, it's like, why would you just, why, why even put that on the label? Because there's so much going on. First of all, you do get that beeswax. The beeswax is that wonderful smell. It just reminds me of those old country stores in New England where they actually make beeswax taper candles, pillar candles. It's just, it has this old country barn aroma, warm wax. And, um, <clears throat> okay, uh, we'll talk about the patchouli. Uh, the patchouli is not strong. If you're not a patchouli fan, don't, don't even worry about it, uh, because the, the patchouli here is the herbal earthiness, but it doesn't smell like, you know, Yankee Candles, uh, Witch's Brew, if you're not a fan of that. It just adds an earthiness to it. And yeah, there's a spice, a cinnamon spice. Um, but what about the balsam and fir? You know, the little, the, the, the Payne's wood cabin, the incense, the biomass compressed incense. Big time lemon zest. And what's great about that, because it has that old country barn aroma, and it's got that lime zest. It's refreshing lime zest, but if you, if you don't mind the furniture polish lemon pledge thing, it does kind of smell like, uh, you know, freshly polished, clean wooden furniture. And this is always a difficult topic for me to talk about because some people, when I say it, they really get turned off. Um, so you really have, have, you have to have an open mind here. Um, the way I usually describe it is tropical grass. So tropical grass would be something like vetiver. Uh, I think we all know citronella, like citronella candles. Um, I would definitely say there's a little bit of a citronella thing here, um, but what I'm getting at is there's a little bit of this bug repellent. Summertime, bug repellent, the off spray, the stuff we put on ourselves to keep away the mosquitoes. Now people are like, I could see them like, wow, that is, a, that is a horrible description. That is not gonna sell this candle. Well, think about it. Um, 
the, the, the aromas, the ingredients that go into those products, especially the ones that are like all natural, they're using, you know, essential oils that really do repel insects, right? And if you think about it, um, insect repellents, although we have an association with insect repellent smelling like tropical grass, it's, it's actually really a pleasant smell. Uh, I actually just asked my brother what he thought about citronella candles, and he never really thought about it because he always just associated citronella candles with just being a candle that you burn to keep away the mosquitoes, but he didn't ever really think about, well, actually, do I like the smell of citronella? Citronella candles actually smell really, really, really nice. Uh, so there is a little bit of this bug repellent in a very pretty way. Uh, but if that sounds off, just think of tropical grass. It sounds prettier. You say citronella, you think of herbal, you think of lemon, you think of lemon verbena, uh, you think of lemon grass. You could say all of these different things uh, without saying a bug repellent. But it does smell a little bit like summertime, a little bit of that, bu that, that uh, bug spray. And it's funny because beeswax kind of makes sense. A little bit of smoky wood too. It's like you took a little blowtorch to um, wood and toasted that wood. Really, really good candle. So again, this company, check them out. It's called Big Dipper. Um, Big Dipper. This one is called Rapture. And it's promoted as a patchouli, cassia, or cinnamon candle. But there's so much more going on. A little bit pricey, especially if you found this in a boutique. I bet you somebody might charge, you know, like 15 to $20 for something like this, especially because it's beeswax. Um, but if you order straight from the company, uh, uh, I think the price point should be about uh, $9 to $15. Really, really nice. Thank you for sending me that candle. Here is another candle company. Let's talk about this. Any questions? This is, this is so much fun for me, guys. Again, let me, again, I have to keep promoting this. The whole reason why I'm going live on Candle Enthusiast today is because I need everyone, everyone, so please swing over to my second channel, Aromatically Speaking. Aromatically Speaking is my live content channel. I do lives as much as I possibly can when I'm on the road. If I'm going to an amusement park, if I'm going to a museum, if I'm staying in an inn or a hotel, if I'm doing behind the scenes stuff, every Sunday we have this show that we call Smell It Sunday, where we just hang out and chat and we talk. I love doing live videos, and I before, I liked keeping it intimate, you know? I liked having it be a small little group, but because of YouTube's policy change, I cannot continue with that channel unless I get 1,000 subscribers. We have well over 1,000 subscribers, subscribers on this channel, but that channel, the secondary channel, purposely you know wanted it to be a quieter arena but we need to get a thousand subscribers so please swing over subscribe and if you can find it in your heart spread the word spread the love if you have friends uh family who are interested in candles uh please ask them to subscribe uh it would really mean a lot to me otherwise i have to forfeit this live show and i've been doing this for over um for over a year and a half and uh, it would break my heart not to be able to do um, uh, build these live live Sunday shows anymore anyway so here we go so we hear the, we here we have a company called Jax Kelly Jax Kelly so um, relatively uh, uh, simplistic label but simplistic is not a bad thing Jax Kelly spelled J-A-X K-E-L-L-Y uh, and it's called Jax Kelly Crystal Candle I don't know why it's called Crystal Candle does that mean wow I have a fan right here so it's blowing it in my face but man talk about a punch in the face whoo Crystal candle. I wonder if there's a there is a crystal. There's a crystal. And I, I, I never I never get those candles where there's like jewelry inside. Not that I don't get them. I mean I never bought bu never burned one. I never have one. Wow. Okay, so that's something I missed. Um, this one's called Citrine Quartz. Citrine Quartz Success Stone. 
Okay, let me show you that label. Citrine Quartz Success Stone. 50 hour burn time, hand poured. 100% soy wax, eco-friendly. And it does say, re retrieve your crystal. So there's a crystal at the bottom of this candle. No fragrance notes, but we don't need them because we have our nose. I love, it's almost as if the companies who send me candles, they know what kind of candle profiles I enjoy. This reminds me of being a child because of so many different childhood associations like candies and desserts. I'll, I'll get into it in a second. But this is not like a bubblegum child's candle aroma. This is a very, very sophisticated aroma. But with that said, it reminds me so much of childhood. And why do I say childhood? There, this is a tangerine explosion. We could say tang. We could say, I used to drink a Tropicana tangerine juice. Um, that was bad. In college, I drank a lot of that. And that's probably why my blood sugar was so messed up. Um, oh, but what are the other tangerine things? Tangerine, tangerine, tang, tang, tangerine, tangerine, tangerine. There's something I'm forgetting. Tangerine. Um, uh, a tang works for now, but man. Um, I feel like there's a candy that I'm missing. But anyway, uh, but also this is, excuse me, another um, descriptor I always like to use because this does have a creamy dairiness to it. Uh, I say that too much. I say creamy dairiness too much. Uh, there's a, let's do this, a soft serve vanilla ice cream. Okay, so I changed my mind quite a bit because I can see vanilla, but it's really more of this rich, creamy, uh, yeah, dairy uh, aroma. And think about this. Remember uh, the concentrated, they still sell them, the concentrated orange juice that comes in the can, the frozen can, right? I used to, that's the kind of orange juice that we used to drink when we were kids. I'm not judging if you still drink it. But that is what, that was orange juice for me growing up, was the concentrated, frozen, cylindrical thing. You let that dissolve uh, inside of a pitcher of cold water. Um, and when we would make it, you know, when we were kids, we would just kind of scoop a little bit out of the can with the spoon, and you would get that super powerful, pungent, uh, orange uh, uh, flavor. Oh man, uh, almost makes me kind of want to do this. I try that uh, again. But also, um, if uh, you're not too young, um, I'm sure you will remember the good old days in the galleries and the shopping malls and get going to get, whew, man, God only knows how much sugar was in those things, Orange Julius. Orange Julius is essentially that concentrated frozen orange stuff mixed with cream and ice and milk and god knows what it's like a it was like a concentrated orange juice sorbet beverage miss it it's still around i think there's a, there's a arby's who owns it but if you're not if you don't have it in the mall the shopping mall it's not the same so anyway um there is a very authentic tangerine uh, aroma to this, but also a candified, uh, exaggerated, concentrated tangerine aroma to this that is sweetened up with uh, some cream, vanilla. If you want to say heavy cream, go for it. It's zesty, but it's actually, there's more of a tartness than anything at all. Here's something I want to say. What if you had a very tart orange? What's a tart, tart orange? Uh, like a variety. Um, 
you know, uh, this kind of, uh, I always like to make up beverages in my mind when I smell a candle like this. Imagine, instead of a lime margarita, okay, so scrap the tequila, but everything else, um, uh, you know, uh, the simple syrup infused with maybe some zest and uh, rimmed with sea salt or kosher salt and zest and some sugar. Imagine like a very tart orange tangerine margarita. Again, minus the tequila. Uh, we could have a, you know, some tequila while burning this candle. And the reason why I say that is because it's just, again, it's a very refreshing candle. So big time, I mean, it's citrine quartz. So citrine, citron, I see where they're going with this. Big time citrus fruit. I'm getting lemon, tangerine, um, a very tart orange, concentrated orange. Uh, I wouldn't even mind going into the realm of a little bit of like a ruby red grapefruit. Um, really, really nice candle. Jax Kelly, 100% soy wax, crystal candle. Um, and uh, the, I guess the, the, the citrine quartz is a success stone. Uh, this is going to retail. Um, I don't have their price, uh, but um, probably 15 to $20. Again, if you if you are a candle company and you send me products, please make sure that you you send all of the information on the candle as much as possible. Price points, uh, websites where people can buy things. A lot of the times, people send me stuff and I, I don't have any information on it, so it's hard for me to promote it. But and and it's upsetting, especially when I enjoy a candle as much as some of the candles I shared with you today. So. Uh, I talked about uh, that I do travel videos. So yes, I'm working on a third channel, folks, a third channel. I'm working on it, I'm ready, to, I'm trying to get ready to launch it. The third channel is is not gonna be about candles. Can the candle enthusiast will always be about candles, but my third channel is going to really be more of my adventure slash travel destination videos. Um, uh, uh, I love hitting the road and documenting my experiences. I like having fun doing ridiculous things, sometimes for seriousness, sometimes, you know, I stayed, I spent the night in the Lizzie Borden house alone. That's not a joke. Check that video out if you haven't seen it. I spent the entire night alone by myself in the Lizzie Borden house. The Axe Murderess. Not Christina Ricci, the real Lizzie Borden house. Um, but I also uh, go out in the snow and uh, make a buffoon out of myself or uh, go to amusement parks or spend the nights uh, and really um, uh, I try to find really unique places like inns and restaurants to, to document. So my third channel will primarily be my, my, my travel, uh, uh, travel and, and tourism adventure channel. So I will be sure to keep you posted when that video or when that that channel is launched and one of the things that I really uh, want to do uh, one of the projects I want to work on for for fun uh, to put myself uh, in a little bit of a challenging situation um, and um, I just think it would be kind of hilarious um, and challenging one of the things I want to do is go to the Pacific Northwest and do my own very naive uh, investigative research on the very famous, infamous uh, American, uh, 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 I don't want to say mythological, but uh, some say fictitious, some say very real, uh, monster beast, Sasquatch or Bigfoot. I want to spend uh, some time in the forest, <laughs> forest at night, camping, going to campgrounds, talking to folks who truly, really believe uh, that the, uh, the Bigfoot is uh, around and have seen them and I, I just want to make a fun video of it and uh, I think it'd be funny I think it'd be and uh, very insightful and, and again it just sounds it may sound a little bit ridiculous but I think that for me it'd be a fun little like short documentary for me to make uh, plus I can't get enough of the Pacific Northwest uh, but with that said I can't skip uh, this candle right here uh, because I love this candle and uh, this candle is made by a very dear friend of mine I've showed this several times and those of you who watch 
um, uh, my channels, or if you are part of the Facebook Candle Enthusiast fan group, swing on over if you're not on Facebook, the Candle Enthusiast fan group. Really great people. I don't run it. They run it. They do a wonderful job. Super fun. Uh, but Nikki from a Washington Wix, uh, Washington as in Washington State, uh, produced a candle called Sasquatch. That's right. That's right. And uh, so, um, you know, um, I have to say, when I was smelling this candle, it kind of gave me the idea of this travel video of doing this Bigfoot thing. And um, I'm not sure if Nikki still has this available. Uh, but either way, make sure you swing over to her Instagram profile, Washington Wix, um, uh, and uh, browse around, reach out to her, let her know that I sent you. She a uh, very, very, very small production candle company, but she's really putting her heart and soul into everything she makes. And this candle is awesome. To me, this transcends home fragrance. That's not what this candle's about. This isn't about, oh, here's a candle. It'll make your living room smell wonderful. It would, it will. That's, that's, not, that's not the objective here. When I smell a candle like this, it's about transporting me to a place there is a place, there is a setting, there is a feeling. This gives you a sense of place, a setting. It puts you somewhere and makes you escape. Although it's a very pretty smell, it's more about the authenticity. This smells like you are out in the vegetation, deep, lost in the forest. And I am not kidding. I mean, we have like hickory, hickory chips smoked. We have a little bit of that mulchy forest floor smell. Or imagine like a, a tree, right? A big, big majestic tree tips over, right? And it's sitting over and it's just sitting there decomposing. And I don't, don't let that, 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 that sound like a bad thing, but just think about that, that sweet smell of that saturated wood, that mulchy kind of smell. Uh, oak moss. Oak moss is a very earthy smell. Um, it smells like the forest floor. And what I mean by the forest floor, I'm serious. Like you just grabbed up a bunch of like twigs and roots and leaves and, and, you, and you smell it. It smells very earthy. This really brings you deep into the forest. And it's a little bit of smoke. It's a little bit of smoke. It's like, it's like you're walking around the forest and you come across a fire pit and there's a little bit of smoke trickling up in the air and you're like, oh, there must have been some people here last night camping out. There's this, not smoky, but this lingering smell of a fire was once here, like a campfire, last night. Because all we smell now is the remnants of the ash and the embers, a little bit of the smokiness and that toasted, roasted, firewood smell. So earthiness, um, a little bit of smokiness, that mulchy, hickory smoke, woodiness. But then we got to talk about the green vegetation people, the moss, the moss. Think about those, those like Bob Ross paintings where he paints those stones by the brook and they're covered with the green moss. This is, and I don't know if she still makes this candle, but this is such a beautiful, authentic, out in the forest candle. Again, if you're looking for candles that are gonna make your house, if you're looking for home, the word home fragrance to me um, is, is like handcuffs. It's, it's too restrictive when it comes to candles because home fragrance to me is like, oh, well, you wanna make your house you know, you want to cover up a bad smell, right? That To me, that's what home fragrance is, right? Like Glade spray. To me, this is an artistic experience. It's, it's, it transports you to a place and a location. And to me, that is where I wish the candle industry would start pushing the envelope. 
yes, it's fun to have candles that smell like peaches. Yes, it's fun to have candles that smell like lavender and laundry room. But let's start making candles that really remind us of experiences in our life. You know, let's make candles that help us retrieve memories, um, very special memories, ones that really intrigue uh, uh, or provoke uh, our emotions. And this is something, this is, uh, this is a kind of candle that will do that. This will definitely remind you of, um, you know, if you have spent time camping or fishing by the lake, um, uh, summertime out in the woods, hiking, uh, this will recreate that experience in the form of a candle. So bravo, Nikki from Washington Wicks. Again, that candle called Sasquatch does not smell like a big dirty monster, but it smells like the forest where Sasquatch may or may not be lingering within the shadows, behind the trees. I don't know where I'm going with that. Jody says, I'm so excited to see your third channel, Shane. Really can't wait. I cannot wait either. Um, I've said this before, but it was on the other channel. I'm doing, uh, taking all of uh, your guys' favorite uh, ch travel videos, the Norman Rocco videos, the Sleepy Hollow videos, the Santa's Village videos, and I'm doing audio commentaries for them. I thought that would be a really cool idea. Um, so when the, the, the channel is launched, all of the videos will already be there. So I'm gonna move over all of my previous adventure videos, travel videos, but also going to have uh, alternate videos, the same videos with audio commentaries. Um, and that process of me uh, sitting down and watching the videos, some of them I haven't watched since I posted them years ago, has really been fun. Um, and hopefully that will give uh, you folks an incentive to swing over and subscribe. It's gonna take a little bit more time. It's gonna take a little bit more time. Uh, I want some new content to put on there too before I do watch it. I have tons and stuff to edit. Um, how are we doing here? Uh, we said, I said I was going to taste those jelly beans. I don't know, man. This is not looking tasty right now. That is not a pleasant sight. However, it smells good. I can't believe I'm actually even considering this. Am I gonna do this? Where's the knife? This is nasty. Like, if you ever, if you're like into making stage props and you need to make fake looking, oh man, this is this is hard as a rock, which it should be. There's, I can't taste this. How am I gonna How am I gonna clean this? I'm gonna have to melt it down again. But what what we did learn from this experience is. Um, we need, we need a jelly bean candle that smells like this. That smells gross, or looks gross. But I think the whole concept of having a jelly bean candle is having, again, the array of different aromas and flavors, right? You know, when we eat a jelly, when we think of jelly beans, we don't just eat, like, all one flavor. We take a handful, and it's a whole bunch of different flavors. And that you know something that we don't have in um, candles like this even though this is a great candle it's just something we don't have all right this is the point of the show where I am going to see if you guys have any questions uh, any questions for me regarding anything at all about uh, uh, this channel my other channel the new channel coming up where I have been if you want to share anything with me, if there's a candle you want to talk about, let's let's open it up. Uh, since I haven't really kind of uh, kept my eye on the comments for too long, but let me just one more time uh, ask you if you can, if you're by your computer or on your phone, uh, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. But most importantly today, one more time, one more time. This is my main channel, The Candle Enthusiast. The whole reason why I'm here on this channel today is to promote 
my second channel, which is my live channel, aromatically speaking. It's a completely fun, spontaneous kind of channel where I go live here anywhere I want with my mobile device, but we need a thousand subscribers. Otherwise, it's it, it's over. I can't continue, I cannot go live on that channel anymore. So we are about 300 subscribers away. So if everyone could swing over to Aromatically Speaking, spread the word, spread the love, send a tweet, post something on Instagram, do whatever you want. I know you have friends who burn candles. Um, even if they don't want to stay a, subs a, su a subscriber, you know, maybe they'll, you know, uh, g you know watch a couple videos. And um, if they want to unsubscribe, that's fine. My point is, uh, it's very important to me because I put a, a year and a half into that second channel, and at this point, uh, it's over. I cannot continue with that channel. Uh, I cannot do lines on that channel. It's over. Uh, and it's very sad that, uh, you know, there should be some kind of seniority thing uh, with YouTube. You know, I have a perfect record with YouTube. I've never done anything wrong. I don't have any strikes. And yet, I feel like YouTube punishing the little people you know, that's not right. So let's show YouTube that if they want subscribers, we can get subscribers. But I'm going to need your help, and it really would mean a lot to me. So swing over to Aromatically Speaking, and, um, and, um, oh, and, and Brent, thank you so much for posting uh, the link. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, really appreciate that, Brent. Um, um, but, uh, so yeah, any questions? Any questions? Those are now baked beans. That, yeah. Baked beans. That would be some candle, wouldn't it? Would you do a candle called pork and beans? Ooh, that would be a rough one. That would be a rough sell. You're going to get a belly ache, Shane. Yeah, I know. I would if I did eat it. And Danny, I want to thank Danny for... She's really put in a lot of effort. And please know that I, I see all of the effort uh, that you and many other folks have put in to try to spread the word for the subscribers. Um, what candle companies do you guys want to see me uh, evaluate? Bren... Um, I love how she's got like the crates behind her in her videos of all of the candles that she has, but she's, she's big on Bath and Body Works. So whenever it's like, uh, I, I will admit, uh, I go right and watch a lot of her stuff because I don't evaluate Bath and Body Works candles. And it's not because I don't like Bath and Body Works. It's just that if I start Bath and Body Works collecting and, 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 and making videos on Bath and Body Works new releases, uh, I'm going to wipe out my bank account. So um, one of these days, I'm going to start slipping in more Bath & Body Works content. But um, if you are, if you do gravitate, you lean more towards the Bath & Body Works candles. And she, it, I'm sure she does other, uh, uh, other content as well. Brent is definitely somebody you're going to want to subscribe to. Just go over right now. Subscribe. Trust me, you won't regret it. And what I love about Brent, again, it's the whole honesty thing, you know. Um, like she, she's just gonna tell you, you know, she's gonna tell you straight what, what she what she thinks, which I think is um, uh, really I think uh, not only the the, the 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 I think it's just a testament of of uh, her videos, and she's saying thank you. Uh, don't thank me. Trust me. Uh, I, I mean everything I'm saying. Uh, um, all right. I'm going to keep my eye on there for any questions, but this is something I always do when I sum up the, the videos. Uh, I have to be a responsible YouTuber. What does a responsible YouTuber mean? Well, that means promoting, uh, promoting yourself even if you feel a little bit uncomfortable. 
uh, promoting yourself. Um, this show is completely self-funded by myself and you folks, meaning um, a lot of wonderful people have been a part of a Patreon. Patreon is a way for you to uh, help fund the show, whether you want to give a dollar a month, 50 cents a month, and that's not a small amount. It adds up quick. Uh, if there's any, if there's, if there's any way you want to help invest or help uh, 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 increase the output of the videos, there's plenty of ways you can help me out. And I promise, this is not money that goes into my pocket. 100% of the proceeds of, uh, of of Patreon go into the production of the Candle Enthusiast and what I call Aromatic Adventures, which are my destination videos. Uh, so Patreon.com, search the Candle Enthusiast or patreon.com slash the candle enthusiast there's tons of rewards there's tons of tears also if you don't want to if you don't want to uh, 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 you know, uh, give money that's, I know that's uncomfortable sometimes giving money like donating money like PBS pledging money it's a little weird uh, there's tons of other ways you can help the channel so make sure you check out in the description section of the videos uh, everything for Amazon wish list if you want to buy like some uh, help me out with uh, I have what do I uh, black wrap black wrap right here I can't take that off it's on there but uh, uh, expendables uh, for camera equipment Any, anything from a couple dollars to uh, someone uh, uh, um, uh, just bought me uh, another re another a rechargeable uh, battery for my GoPro and that is just like oh my god you have no idea like that might seem like a small gesture it is not so there's always ways you can help the channel and again the more help we have as a community the more I'll be able to produce uh, and uh, the the grander our, our, our videos can become and not just candle evaluations I'll always be doing the candle evaluations. I'm talking about uh, the the travel channels and the adventure videos. So make sure you check out all of the different ways um, to uh, uh, help out the channel. Also, the Facebook fan group. Bren, I don't think Bren is a part of the Facebook fan group. Wink, wink. Uh, uh, if anyone's not, it really is a super family-friendly incredibly positive space zero zero drama that uh, when when the moderators and the administrator Rachel wink wink um, when she created uh, the fan group my only request was that it is a 100% positive drama free no fight zone if there's any kind of arguing or bickering out um, it's a super, it's, it's like I said, completely family friendly, whether you're seven years old and you enjoy candles or if you've been purchasing candles for decades and you have tons of information, wealth of knowledge that you want to share to new candle, uh, uh, uh fans, uh, we'd love to have you. So swing on over, uh, request to join. Um, and we don't just talk about channels. We talk about tons of stuff. We talk about toys and candy and 80s television shows we talk about nostalgia tons of fun stuff happening over there and plus it's a great way to keep up to date with what I am doing as far as uh, my videos um, what's coming out what I'm working on where I am and same thing with my social media so that's it I have to promote myself responsible YouTube person but everybody thank you so much um, and Brent's saying, oh man, I need some zero drama space. Don't we all? Don't we all? Thank you so much for joining my, on my main channel today. Um, this is... I can't tell you how important uh, in the past three years having uh, the Candle Enthusiast and my other channels and uh, uh, planning out, foreseeing the future of where I want to take uh, my content, my videos, how much it's mean to me. It's been such a crazy, uh, tumultuous, but really fun journey. I've met so many hundreds, uh, not met, but talked with thousands of folks who otherwise I never would have spoken to in my entire life. Easily the most incredible thing I've ever done with my life is create this YouTube channel. So. 
for you guys to hang out with me for an hour, or excuse me, 144 minutes on a Sunday, just to hear me talk like an idiot, burn jelly beans, talk about candles, it really, truly makes me happy and uh, makes my heart very warm. It, it, it really does brighten my day, and that is something I've always needed in my life. So just know that I thank you and appreciate your support, your kindness, your genuine friendship with all of my heart, and I never, ever take it for granted. Thank you so much. Tons of adventures, candle evaluations, candle factory tours. You heard me correct. We got some big things happening in the future. I'm putting 120% into the future of all of my channels, and I'm so happy to have you guys in the passenger seat so from, from me here in the studio, Candle Enthusiast, I'm signing out. Everyone have a fantastic Sunday. Have a fantastic dinner. Go out, get some ice cream. It's warm enough, at least it is here in New York, where we can consider it spring. Have a fun time and have a wonderful week. And I will be seeing you folks very soon. Thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye, guys. And did I tell you about Aramac?